Hey, here is a Java 8 interview question and it will be it will be on the functional interface. I actually want to make a short video, but I feel like, you know, uh, I can go for a long format so that I can show you around two, three different scenarios and can ask um, two, three different questions. So let me go to a sample project that I have called Java interview demo inside the source main uh, Java. I have a interface called I test. Okay. So first of all, tell me, is this a functional interface? And the answer is absolutely not. Uh, this is, this is what we call a marker interface because we do not have any method available inside this interface. Okay. To make it a functional interface, we have to create an abstract method like this. Let's say public void method one. And there we go. So this is right now a functional interface because this interface does have one abstract method. Any method that we write inside the interface by default public and abstract. So we don't have to explicitly write, write it like this. It is anyhow public and abstract. Okay. Now I have another question. If I'm going to copy this and paste it over here and I'm going to write method two. Uh, so is this a functional interface right now? Because this interface does have two abstract method. No, this is not a functional interface because the functional interface makes sure that the interface should have only one abstract method so that we can use it for Lambda purpose. Okay, here is another question. What if I as a developer who have created this interface want this interface to stay as a functional interface throughout the project development uh, life cycle? I do not want somebody will come to this interface and will change this uh, interface by adding one more abstract method because I want to use it as a functional interface all the time and this interface should not allow any other developer to add any other abstract method. Then what should I do? How can I restrict them? I can do that by writing a functional interface annotation over here and this annotation will make sure that if there are more than one abstract method this will complain and this will give you the compilation error. So this will not allow you to add one more method in case you are trying to add it. Once you remove it, the compilation error is gone, right? This annotation ensures us that our interface will stay as a functional interface all the time. So this is a marker kind of uh, uh, annotation that we have. Now I have a question. Tell me two different functional interface name that you have used in Java. Let me know in the comment section. Okay. I will check that out. Okay, so the next question here, uh, and here is the important one. So guys, what I want to do, let me just comment out this functional interface annotation. And what I will do, I will go to uh, the object class, right? I have a class called objects, right? Uh, which is the super uh, class for all the classes in Java. And what I will do, I will go for one of the method like has code or equals or something. Uh, and uh, we have a lot of methods here, right? Has code method, equals method. Uh, we have a clone method, two string method, right? Let me just copy one of the method from here. Let me copy this two string method like this. And I will go to my I test. Uh, I will basically remove this method one, okay? And I will paste it over here. And I will declare it as an abstract method like this. Now you tell me if this is a functional interface. And the answer is no, it is not. So how can I be assured I can on come in this annotation and you can see right now, this is giving you a compilation problem. And the reason for that is pretty simple. This two string is an abstract method. Absolutely. Even if you are not writing the public and abstract, this is still an abstract method. But the problem is any method from object class, if you are overriding over here inside a functional interface, that will simply be ignored. That's why we are getting a compilation problem over here. This interface is complaining that we should define at least one abstract method inside our interface. Even though this is an abstract method, but simply it is getting ignored. I have to write something like this, public void, let's say method one. I have to declare an abstract method like this in order to get rid of the compilation error. And now we got a rule that if we are overriding any methods from the object class and defining it as an abstract method inside a functional interface, that method will be simply be ignored and our functional interface want us to declare any one of the abstract method which is not there inside the object class, right? Perfect. So I have one more question for you. Let me comment this out. Okay, I'm gonna comment out the public void method one. 
and I'm going to be defining one more method and that's going to be a equals method. And if I'm going to write this, just let me know if this is a functional interface and will the code compiled as a functional interface? And the answer is absolutely not because the equals method is also a object class method and it will simply be ignored if I will on comment the functional interface and it is warning me because all these two methods are getting ignored. I have to define a abstract method like this in order to get rid of the problem. Another question. Now what I'm going to do inside the two string method, I'm going to be writing something like this string value. Okay. <laughs> now tell me if this interface is a functional interface. And the answer is this method is already there in the, inside the object class, right? Inside the object class, we already have a two string method, right? And if we'll go by the rule, you know, this should not be considered as an abstract method inside a functional interface. But if I'll uncomment the code, you can see it is right now not complaining. And right now this method can be a perfect candidate for my functional interface I test. Why is that? Because this is not method overriding. Uh, this is method overloading. I have a method with same signature and everything, but here I'm accepting one more argument. If you're gonna look at the method that I have over here and the method that I have in the object class, the object class method does not have any, uh, you know, uh, arguments defined inside it. But in my iTest method, there is a argument defined inside it. And this is an example of method overloading, not method overriding. If you are talking about the overloaded method of the object class, then they can be a perfect candidate of a functional interface, okay? Here is another question for you. Inside the iTest interface, we have a hello method. Look at this. This is a default method. And we have a static void main method. And we have an abstract method called hello. And this takes one argument over here. Now tell me whether this is a valid functional interface. If I'll uncomment this annotation, then will it give me error? This is a question for you only hint I want to give. Just ask yourself a question. Can I write a method with a body if I write default keyword with this? Is default method in interfaces is allowed? By the way, I'm using a Java version which is 19. So just let me know if this is a functional interface in the comment section. Okay, so here is the final question for you. Look at this example and let me know if I'll uncomment this functional interface it will be giving me a compilation problem or it will compile fine, okay? Apply the same rule and just let me know. You have a equals method, you have a two string method. Is it matching the exact same signature as the object class equals and object class two string method? Absolutely yes. Then these are the case of method overriding. And if it is the method overriding, then this couple of methods will be ignored. And what about this one? There is a hash code method but if you want to look at the object class hash code method, it doesn't take any parameter. But look at the iTest method, it does take a int value as an argument. So this is not the case of method overriding, rather this is the case of method overloading. So the overloaded method of the object class will not cause any issue and there will be a perfect candidate for one abstract method rule inside a functional interface. So if I'm going to remove it, this will work fine and this will not give you any issue. Perfect. So before I wrap up, here is a question for you that you have to let me know in the comments or just let me know if I should make one more video on this. Let me know why this guy is causing me issue. Let's say if I have one method and this method is an overridden method of the object class, why this is getting ignored? Why the object class equals method is not going to be a candidate for one abstract method rule when it comes to the functional interface? Just let me know in the comments. I'll see you guys in the next video. Till then, thank you for watching and have a good day. Bye-bye.